Is there anything that's come up recently that uh, maybe has made a job a little bit more complicated or a little bit more interesting based on what somebody has done that's a part of the process? We had a lady drive through the seal coat to the cones and as my crew sitting there with her recording her because we'd like to give that information back to the manager so that they can do the proper back charge for any damages that have, have occurred she looks at the crew and says the signs say no parking they don't say no driving if you were to summarize what are the key things that a manager or a board member really should know like definitively before they would start into a, a seal coat project Most people are not equipped to understand the seemingly endless facets of an HOA. That's why we're here, to help you become uncommonly prepared to serve your HOA. Whether you're a board member or a manager, join us in the Uncommon Area. Welcome to the Uncommon Area. I am Matthew Holbrook, and this episode is about all things asphalt. And joining me to talk about asphalt, seal coat, slurry seals, and much more is uh, Jeremy Taylor of Ben's Asphalt. So thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Um, super excited, I think, to talk about asphalt, as exciting as that can be. Um, so why don't we just start off with and kind of let you um, kick things off with what are we even talking about? What is asphalt when somebody refers to asphalt? So when anyone refers to asphalt, I just say it's the black stuff that you drive on. So all right, we can just move on from there then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we, what's what, what are we uh, talking about specifically on what constitutes asphalt? So asphalt is a mixture of rock, sand, bind it together with oil, uh, placed down at a minimum of two hundred and sixty degrees, and compacted. And you would, and you, when you pour asphalt, so it's, it has to actually be uh, 260 degrees when it's being poured? Uh, when it's placed, yes. Placed? What's the right terminology so, on that? Yeah, when, when asphalt's laid and placed. So uh, with concrete, you'll say it's poured. Okay. Uh, when asphalt's laid or placed, uh, it comes out anywhere from 260 to 320 degrees from the plant when the trucks arrive and, so when and it's dump it out. when it's actually placed... Um, is it still at about that temperature? Yes, you want so you don't it. Don't want to be touching it. C correct. You do not want to touch it. <laughs> and about how long does it take uh, for it to cool? Uh, it, it cools pretty quick, within an hour or two. Uh, okay. So as soon as it's rolled and uh, placed down, you don't want to walk on it right away. But uh, pretty soon after that, you can within an hour or two. Okay. And then um, related to asphalt, uh, there's often a lot of discussion around uh, slurry seal or seal coat. Um, can you talk just for a minute about about those uh, aspects and maybe what the difference is? So the terminology slurry seal came from, it's been an old school term that a lot of people have used over the years, and there actually is a difference. So uh, what you're doing in the homeowner associations is a seal coat. Um, when you do a road slurry, that's out on the roads. Uh, you would like to use that for cars that are driving straight, that aren't doing a bunch of turning. Uh, slurry sill has a much more aggregate component to it, whereas in sill coat is more of a topical agent that goes on top of the asphalt. So if you were to do a road slurry inside an HOA with a lot of garages, a lot of turning, what ends up happening is it becomes a huge mess because of the aggregate component that ends up going everywhere because it's not designed for cars stopping, starting, and turning. It's more designed for straight road uh, driving. So you see that out on the streets a lot. Okay. So I do think that within our, our industry, and I'm sure you hear this all the time, that that those terms are kind of uh, uh, used interchangeably. And what you're saying is they're, they're really not. Uh, that is correct. But whenever someone says a slurry sill, I already know what they're talking right. about. And then you just take a second to educate them to make sure that they really want a seal coat and then they and lead them down the road that you do not want to do a road slurry right. within this HOA. So that's, that's common. You you'll hear from a manager and say, Hey, we want to get a bid for, for, for slurry sealing. And then you just kind of walk them through that process. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when is it, uh, when, when does an association need to, or should they be thinking about doing a seal coat for their roads? So, uh, Typically every three to five years, it really depends on, there's a couple different factors that go into it. Uh, how many times it's been seal coated, you know, if there's a lot of seal still on the ground, you don't want to over seal coat because it's just like paint. Whereas if you keep doing it over and over, you'll get that bottom portion to delaminate and then you'll never get the bond on it. So you definitely can over seal coat 
So you, you really need to get an evaluation on it, but the rule of thumb is every three to five years. So if you were asked to go out and do an evaluation, what are you looking for? Uh, first thing I'm looking for is any structural uh, deficiencies in the asphalt. You know, are there linear cracks? Is it alligator? Is it, you know, where it's at on its, its life? Because asphalt has a life expectancy, 20 to 25 years starting brand new. So I'll, I'll do an evaluation, maybe a, a one to five scale. Say, okay, where's the asphalt at right now? And then decide, is there any seal on the ground? Is it ready for seal coat? You can look at the asphalt and see if it's gray, if it's black, just the different aspects of the asphalt to decide if it's ready or not. So your evaluation that you're doing, you can do just visually. You're not necessarily doing anything where you're having to open up the asphalt in any way. That is correct. So everything I do is on a visual. Okay. So, uh, you know, sometimes associations will hire an engineer. They'll come in and do core samples, do a plan together for them to, and that's especially on larger projects, but everything I do is, is on a visual aspect. So when you're looking at, and you're coming out and you're doing your evaluation, um, are there times when you come back and you say, Hey, uh, um, this is bad enough. The, uh, you know, a, a seal coat is not going to solve your problem. We need to take this to another level. Uh, that's a very common conversation. And so where does that go? So typically I'll, I'll talk, I'll reach out to the manager and just let them know, Hey, I know you guys requested a seal coat. Uh, I'm looking at the asphalt and this is, does not need to be seal coated. Uh, if you do a seal coat, you're just going to be wasting your money. There's no return on investment for the money that you're going to spend right now. So this is what my recommendation is. And usually they'll, they'll take, because I'm the professional, they'll take that and take it to the board and then the board will talk about it. And ultimately it is the board's decision what they want to do. But my job as a project manager estimator is just to educate and give them as much information as possible so they can make a proper decision and try to extend the life and, and make a, a conscious decision of what they want to do with their asphalt. So if the seal coat is not going to be the answer for a particular situation, then we're getting into talking more about structural repairs to the asphalt. Absolutely. Is, there, and is, am, I, am I even expressing that in the you, right way? You, you are, yes. Okay. So that after seal coat, you, there's a couple different things you can do. So you could still seal coat and do isolated spot repairs. Uh, if the asphalt is to a life, like 60% of the asphalt is in bad condition, you don't necessarily want to go in and do 40 patches. And then you end up having qu a, a quilt looking uh street right. almost because you've done a ton of patches and then you seal coat it. But as the seal coat fades over time, you see all these patches. I mean, living in Orange County, every community is high end these days. So uh, aesthetics is a very big part of what we're doing as well. So it really is a case by case basis. But with that being said, I can look at something pretty quick and, and analyze and decide what route I, I feel they should go. And I can give my opinion on that. So do you do... Uh, um, I would imagine you're doing um, seal coats and asphalt repairs and those types of things in all types of um, situations. Um, I know you do a lot in HOAs. Um, is, is there anything that's come up recently that uh, maybe has made a job a little bit more complicated or a little bit more interesting based on what somebody has done that's a part of the process? Yes, uh, this has been quite the uh, seal coat season. So right now we're just coming to the end of our seal coat season. Uh, you can see uh, today's weather is raining. So that poses problems, but, uh, you know, with time changing here in the next week, we've really just, you know, trying to cram everything in so we can get everything done. Uh, just had a job about a week and a half ago where all the residents have been notified cones have been put up and you still get residents that either don't get the notice, say they don't get the notice. Uh, usually what happens is they drive out of their garage during the project. So everything's blocked off. They drive out of the garage. Well, we had a lady drive through the seal coat to the cones. And as my crew sitting there with her recording her, because we'd like to give that information back to the manager so that they can do the proper back charge for any damages that have, have occurred. She looks at the crew and says, the signs say no parking. They don't say no driving. So yeah, you, obviously you can just drive right over the seal, <laughs> right. the, 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 the seal coat. Um, so that was a new one. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's the first time that's, that's, that's the first time I've ever seen it live on a video really? uh, with someone saying that. So, and now I you're gonna have to put the signs say no parking or, or driving, drive, right. make, make that clear. <laughs> 
Um, so when somebody uh, does something like that and they drive on your just fresh seal coat, what kind of damage does that do? What does that set you back? How do you fix that? So fortunately on this instance and a lot of the projects that we've done lately are a two coat application. So uh, the residents usually drive over it during the first coat, which the street and the actual seal coat on the roads is we can fix it because we put down the second coat. You never see the tire marks. If it's a one coat application or if it's later in the day, then it poses a different problem because it leaves the tire marks. You have to come back and reseal that area. Uh, maybe torch out the um, tire marks just to kind of smooth them out so you don't see them. Uh, the main problem is the tracking onto concrete, onto concrete gutters, onto stamped concrete. And then when that happens, it needs to be pressure washed. And that goes back to the reason why we instruct the crews to take a picture of the car, sure. get a video so we can give it to the manager so they can do the proper uh, channels they need to do after that. All right. I don't want to get too stuck on this particular yep. in incident, but it does raise several issues. One, and I'm just asking like I don't know anything, and um, I, obviously I don't. Um, you mentioned earlier that you don't want to over slurry or, I'm sorry, over overcoat. Mm -hmm. um, now, somebody does that where they drive on the seal coat, and then you're coming back and you're having to put you've already done your two coats and you're having to put an additional coat to cover that up. Aren't you in danger of, of overdoing it? You, you definitely are putting a lot of seal on the ground. And that, that's a very good question. The answer is yes, depending on especially where the life cycle of the asphalt is. You know, how many times has it been seal coated already? So typically once you put new asphalt down, you seal coat it. And then you're on a three to five year cycle. So if they're at their 15 years and this is their fifth seal coat and two coats are down you put another coat yeah there's a better chance okay. especially where there's water you know if you're next to landscape area that's where you're going to get a lot of that water onto the seal coat which gets under it and then we'll get it to pop all right and in this uh you had referenced um seal coat season um and um i think it might be worth just highlighting, I think what you're implying with that is that um, rain and any type of precipitation probably does not go well with uh, with doing seal coats. Yes, rain, rain, and the cold weather are not friends with the seal coat. So, so you're you're primarily operating um, spring through summer, um, spring, summer, fall, and I mean, living in California, it yeah. seems like summer extends all the way through fall. So right. my, my rule of thumb is for homeowner associations, and there might be a one-off, there might be a board that really wants to get some work done. Um, you just, as long as you educate them, the, these are the situations that can arise. Uh, my rule of thumb is any, with the time change. So right, right now, time's going to change on November 6th. I, I'll shut down all HOA seal coats. Uh, until time changes back in March. And then you have to play it by ear because if you get some later rains into the spring, you just really have to, as a project manager, you have to pay attention to that and let the boards know because the last thing you want to do is schedule something. Everyone's been notified and then it's going to rain and you had an indication it might rain. And then you have to re notify everyone right. and the inconvenience for the homeowners, the extra work for us, the extra work for the manager in general. So. So that brings us to just even the coordination with the homeowners. That seems that that's a very significant part of any seal coat process. Um, you are cutting off their access to being able to, to drive to their home. What are some of the things that a manager or a board should be thinking about in, in that regard? So my rule of thumb is always the front end communication sets up the job for success. So uh, typically once a project's awarded, uh, I will work with the manager. I will usually write up a mock notice. Uh, I'll write up the notice for the community. I'll put a phasing plan together, uh, send it to the manager in word format and say, Hey, you know, share this with the board, look at it. If there's anything you want to change, add, then we can do that, but give them the meat and potatoes of the notice because I've been doing it. Right. And for them to try to recreate and do a notice, it just makes a lot of extra work for the manager. So once they get that notice, you know, they typically, once it's approved, they'll mail that out, uh, you know, with technology these days, everyone has an e-blast with the community, they'll e-blast that. And then we'll come in and put up a uh, notification cones with no parking signs 48 hours before the job starts. So right there's three touches that yeah. the community has 
and you only get maybe one or two. You know, there's a lot of problems if you have a community with a lot of renters and then the owner doesn't communicate that, you still right. come up with some issues. But we've seen a lot of success with that. An- another point that is really good is having a tow truck on site, just on call. So when there are, if there are six or seven cars in the way, uh, that we get an earlier jump on it because, you know, you don't want to get till 1130 in the day and we're still waiting for a car to move or we have to decide, do we have to silk it around this car? There's a bunch of different things that come with that. So, yeah. And obviously we want to do everything we possibly can to get the communication out so that we're not in that situation. As, as soon as we start towing, it's going to be a bad day for everybody because <laughs> we're going to hear about it. You're going to hear about it. And obviously the, the person who had their car towed is not going to be happy. So correct. Um, uh, but understand that sometimes just to get the job done, that's that's what it's going to come to. Uh, with that, it does seem that a big part of the equation is we have to make sure that we're identifying and maybe providing some input to the residents as to where their parking alternatives are for right. that period of time. Yeah, and typically in that notice that I'll put together, we'll we'll talk about you know keeping the water off from the irrigation, uh, where to park, you know where not to park, and the times and the dates, and it's it's a pretty detailed notice. Uh, try to keep it on one page because as you know, everyone's busy, and if it's two pages, then yeah, they're never going to get to the second right. page. Is it um, is, is the typical pattern that you would be able to do a project in an HOA to where an individual home might only be inconvenienced for one day? Or is it um, is it likely that an, an, an individual home may have multiple days without access? T- typically on seal coats, we as we phase it, you know, depending on the size of the community will depend on how many phases there are and how many homes are affected. But each home should only be affected one time with a seal coat. Uh, if if the phasing's put together properly, and tip, typical seal coat would be shut down from day one at seven a.m. and then open the next day uh, around noon, depending on how much striping there is. So uh, twenty nine hours, maybe to thirty two hours, if you extend it to three p.m. is your typical shutdown time on a seal coat. Now, if you're doing a major asphalt project, then your shutdown time will be longer based on the scope of work and what we're doing in that area. That's if you're getting more into making structural repairs that, to the asphalt. That is correct. But on a seal yeah. coat, right. you should only be down for one day. Uh, with that being said, I do have a special community that we're working on right now. Uh, I was finished, supposed to finish the last phase today, uh, but with the rain this morning, we just, we last night I decided to reschedule it. So I went out there last night, moved all the cones, rescheduled it for Friday, but it's a bigger area and the community asked if we could break it into two phases. I said, that's not a problem. We can do that. But the problem that's going to happen is on time changes on Saturday. We already have issues with the shaded areas and the silk coat not drying in this community. So I told them for that next phase that we scheduled for next week, I would recommend keeping it shut down for two days to give it that extra time to right. dry. So that's a one-off special case, sure. but mainly it's a one-day impact. Right. Okay. And then you'd mentioned uh, uh, the striping. Is that generally something that the asphalt company does or does the manager and board need to coordinate with somebody else to do that? No, you definitely want to, when you, any asphalt company you have has the capability, they have a striping crew or they, they have the capabilities to include that. So you want to include that together because the coordination is so close together. Uh, like I said, when you close an area to seal coat, you actually stripe it before you open it up. Right. So... Okay. And then you just gave this uh, one example. It sounds like uh, shaded areas that might affect the the drying time um, can make a job more difficult or more time consuming. Are there any other factors within a community that might create complications? Does it do do hills create problems, speed bumps? Is there anything about the roads themselves that that can make things more challenging? So uh, the slope and steepness on, on hills poses problems when you're doing asphalt. Uh, actual laying uh, new asphalt because if it's too steep, you know, getting the equipment on there, getting the roller on there, uh, you know, there's a rule of thumb on a certain percentage of slope. But with the sill coat, the issues end up not being that or the speed bumps. It ends up being more the trash trucks. Uh, is anyone moving out? Uh, the landscape uh, irrigation sprinklers from either homeowners or common area, uh, different items like that. Uh, trash trucks are a big thing. And we could talk more about that if you like. Yeah, let's come to that in just a second. But um, you've brought this up a few times, and I just it sounds like it should be highlighted that when a community is doing a seal coat, you absolutely need to get your landscaper on board right away and 
coordinate with getting irrigation turned off at the right time. So that sounds like that that's a significant factor in the equation. Yeah, very big. Just like with the rain, if if the sprinklers go on the night before and the streets are wet, we can't put the seal coat down because it won't bond. Uh, it'll end up being a mess in that area. So uh, yeah. definitely we always recommend that the landscaper turns, if it's common area, they turn it off 24 hours before and then keep it off 24 hours after. In some communities, you need to coordinate that with the individual homeowners as well. That is correct. Yeah, so the notice includes to the homeowner keeping the sprinklers off because when you have the single-family residence and it's all um, homeowners, homeowners that have their own uh, yard, yes. Yeah. So trash trucks, yeah. Um, talk to me about trash. So the trash trucks, you, you definitely always want to coordinate your your seal schedule around the trash trucks. Uh, my rule of thumb is I'll never seal coat the day before trash pickup. And that's just from experience, seeing that uh, especially we had a very humid uh, summer this last summer, so which very warm, and it's good for the seal coat drying, but it also poses the problem with uh, the, the tire marks from the trash trucks, power steering marks, which aesthetically take about three to four weeks to blend in. So right after a community does a seal coat and then they see that, they think right. that the asphalt's ruined, but and it was just more the elements so always coordinating, coordinating around the trash trucks. Like I said, never the day before, um, you know, even if you have to go multiple weeks just to accommodate that. And, you know, you have some communities, condos especially, where you have trash pickups four to five days a week. So then you have to have the manager get with the trash company to make sure that they're not picking up in that area um, because the last thing you want is a trash truck driving through. We already have enough Amazon cars and DoorDash driving through that. Yeah, uh, I bet that really complicates things these days. It does. Um, with just that, that kind of additional traffic. Um, what's the, the hardest part of the process uh, if, when we're talking about seal coat specifically? Uh, I think each year is different. Like this year, I think the hardest part was just getting it all fit in. I mean, since for the, the last couple of years with COVID and everything else uh, that's going on, in the world, there's just a lot of people who are wanting to do work and then trying to fit it all in within that season. Uh, that's been the hardest part this year. And then if you have an issue like with the rain, uh, we had a rain a couple of weeks ago that was not on anyone's radar. So we're out silk coating and it started raining for yeah. one hour really hard. And, yeah. you know, that poses problems too, especially when you're booked out on scheduling through yeah. the end of the season and then trying to still take care of that client. You can't go to the client and say, hey, by the way, you got rained out and we're going to come back you're in, in a months. month. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I guess just as we kind of uh, um, bring this in for a landing, if you were to summarize, what are the key things that a manager or a board member really should know, like definitively before they would start into a, a seal coat project? So my recommendation, a couple things would be start the process early. Um, you know, if you're planning on doing any work in 2023, right now even uh, into January, February is a really good time to start planning that and get on board, even just reaching out to your um, asphalt vendor and saying, hey, can you go give me an evaluation, go take a look at the community uh, so that you don't get in a, a spot where you're waiting till July to even start the process. And then, you know, boards only meet once a month at most right. and then getting that approval and then you're late in the season again. Yeah. Um, a second thing to do is also ha have a job walk you know, get, get three of your vendors out there on the job so that they can see the project. Uh, they can give their input. You know, you get a lot of times you have a board member that says, Hey, we need to do a seal coat because they're going off of the reserve study. Well, the reserve study, sometimes they, they, they're just building their financials and like trying to forecast what the community needs, but they don't actually know what the asphalt needs. So it could say in the reserves that you're ready for a major asphalt repair. And I could go look at it and say, I would recommend that you wait a year. You could save this money. There's no reason to do it right now. Or if the flip side, it says they're not ready for a grind and overlay till for five years. And I look at, it, I say, listen, if you wait two more years, you're going to not be able to grind and cap this anymore. You're going to have to do a full depth remove and replace. So really relying on the asphalt vendor to take a look and, sure. and help that process as well. Yeah. Um, last question I have for you is, um, is um, seal coat um, basically a commodity in the sense that is is the the coat itself pretty much going to be the same from one company to the to the next, and it's more about the service or there are actual actually differences in the in the seal coat itself. So there, there's a couple different uh, 
manu- silk coat manufacturers out there. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. They're all right. You know, they all have to meet a, a green book spec uh, for their product. So uh, the products are similar out there. You know, we obviously have the products that we like to use. So most companies are going to be using something similar to that. Um, but that's not really going to be a differentiator. That, that's not going to be the differentiator. It's, it's more, um, you know, are they adding too much water to it? Because you do have to add water to the silk coat to put it down. But if you do overwater it, then you're not getting as much of the silk coat product. Right. So um, my, my suggestion is, you know, uh, everyone has their asphalt vendors that they like to use. And build your relationship and, you know, know who you're working with. And as long as you have a trust factor with them, you know that you're going to get a good product. Yeah, so it's it's relationship based. It's uh, and you're relying on expertise and service are the are the primary factors for the vendors. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much. Super helpful. Um, Great. And uh, really appreciate your time. And uh, we just encourage you to continue to look for more episodes of the Uncommon Area.